Hey folks, and in today's COPS quick tip, I would like to take a look at ways to bring in height field data, mass from our height fields, into COPS. In a previous video, I took a look at the channel copy node and two of my viewers, uh, Carlos and Benox50, were pointing out that it's a pretty cumbersome node to use. And I would agree with that. So we're going to take a look at a different technique today using VOPCOPS to generate our mass. I'll sum up with some of the pros and cons of each technique. All right, let's go. So I'm going to just start out by going to the terrain effect shelf here and I'm going to just hit terrain and we'll just do hills. The terrain itself is not very important. So I just let that run in the background. I don't actually care about the terrain itself. I just want to create some masks on it. So I'm going to mask by feature here and let's quickly create some mass here. Uh, there you go, that one's just fine. So each time we create a mask, we get a mask here, which we need to rename. So we can just put down, you can type HF to shorten the list to height field and we'll just do a height field copy layer and we'll copy it from mask and I'm just gonna call this one slope. Now I like to name the copy layer slope as well. Just makes it easier for me to read and I'll just copy out both of those. And let's turn off the slope and let's do uh, curvature as well. Compute the range and there you go, we've got some curvature and let's just rename this to, and the same thing here. Now you can do this for as many mass as you want, that's good enough for me. And maybe just to be neat, let's just go and clear mask at the end. And let's put down a null and we'll call this two cups. Over here, we can put down a comp network. Over in cops, then I can put down a SOP import. This is how we can pull our masks into cops. And I can hit this little picker here and go to my null. And that will bring in my height field information into cops. By default, I just have C and A over here, which is my color and my alpha. So I can't actually see my masks. So I need to hit this button here, set planes from SOPs. And now I have height, mask, slope, and curvature. Now you can see that my resolution here is set to uh, one of my previous projects. So I need to go and set my resolution as well. So set resolution from SOP. Here is slope and curvature. And we get lots and lots of detail. So we get loads of nice details in our masks. The issue that you'll run into pretty quickly is that these are stored in particular image planes. That's the language that Houdini uses and I need to get them back into C, okay? So I need to get them back to color, uh, either to write them back out to disk, so C or G, C, G, C, B, or to do any other kind of compositing on them. You would naturally think, having watched my previous video, that you can use the channel copy to do this, and you can, but it's fairly unintuitive. So let's look at a different way. I'm going to put down a VOP cop filter here, and I'm going to hook my SOP import up to the first uh, input from my VOPCOP filter and we can dive in here and we have our outputs over here so we've got R, G, B and A as an output so I am going to put down a bind and I will set my bind here to slope and you will need to get the spelling right it is a float because it's a black and white image so I'm going to pump that out to R here and let's put down another bind and I'm going to type curvature here, curvature, and that is a float as well, and let's put that out to G. Now, if I come back up out of my VOPCOP, the first thing we'll notice if we look over here is that I now have a C image plane. And if I go and take a look at my C image plane, it has written slope into R and curvature into G. So you can see slope here, and we can see curvature there. If I had more masks here, I could bring another one in and plug it into B and into A as well. So you could have four masks in total. Just make sure when you're checking your channels here that you set it back to RGBA, just so that you're you're back on full color uh, before you go on and do any more compositing. If you were writing out to disk, uh, such as channel packing splat maps for uh, terrains in games, um, well, then you could just put down your ROP uh, output here and write it out to disk. I would suspect that if you're bringing it into COPS, you will want to do some texturing with it and you would need a C channel to do that. Most of the nodes are expecting a CR, CG and CB uh, channels to be there when doing compositing. So the VOPCOP way of splitting our channels is much more straightforward 
to implement, I think, than the channel copy, which is a little bit more cumbersome to use. The channel copy, the, the issue that you run into when you try it with the channel copy is you plug your mass in and you say, okay, I want to write this out to C, so my target is going to be C, and there is no C or C, G, and C, C, B here. And that is because you need to go and create the C channel. It's not finding it in the SOP import node. So you need to hit new plane here and create C or GB. So we have now created a color image plane. And you would set that to, uh, let's say, slope in this case. And that's our slope one set up. And then we could move, uh, we can copy that one and set this one over to curvature. And then we can use another channel copy. And again, this wouldn't necessarily be obvious that you need to do it that way. Uh, to go and combine them back together again. So now you can see we have a color. So we've got CR, CG, and CB here. So in this case, I can say CR and I'll set it to input one. That's this one here. Uh, and it can be CR. They're black and white anyway. So input one CR here will work fine. And then this guy here is going into input two. So I can click a plus here and I can say this the target is CG and the, in, uh, the one I'm looking for, the source is input to and again it's a black and white image so i can pick whichever one i like now it looks like in this case the color difference is because the slope has been put into the r and the b i think so maybe if we just go and grab uh the height which also came through and we just put this into the b slot here so again we add another target and we say the target is cb in this case and uh, so it has gone to black by default here. So now it looks the, pre the same as previous. Uh, but I guess in this case, we could go and say input three and we'll pick height. And there you go. That's all of those channels now packed in, right? So which technique should you use? I think the Vopcop filter uh, method is much faster to implement. The channel copy is quite cumbersome to use. I do suspect in more complicated scenarios, uh, such as if you needed to roto one of the masks, or uh, potentially if you were getting the difference of two masks, or doing more complicated compositing of masks and roto shapes together, I suspect that maybe you would, need, in the end, need to go the channel copy route. But the most direct route in this case, I think, is to just use the Vopcop filter. Being able to shuffle our AOVs or being able to shuffle our masks is quite important. Uh, so I guess having both techniques is probably going to be useful in the end. I hope you found this quick tip useful and I'll see you in the next video.